Many of us are finally getting back together in larger groups this holiday season, and if you're looking for gifts to gift to someone, perhaps you could consider a party game, something that would be opened at the gathering while you were there, and you can play it right away. So in a way, you're giving a gift to yourself. In this video, I'll go over a half dozen party game suggestions based on the ratings of hundreds of thousands of BoardGameGeek users and the BoardGameGeek team, which has tried to ensure that all the games are in print, at least in the United States, which is where most of us are located. So that's what we know best. Let's get started. Codenames is played in teams, and it's ideal for parties because people can join a team mid-game as they arrive. One person on each team is the spy master, and their job is to get their teammates to identify their agents in the field who are known only by their code names. These code names are laid out in a 5x5 grid, and the spy masters have a code card to identify which agents are theirs. On a turn, a spy master gives a single word clue along with a number, such as postcard 4. This suggests that there are four agents out there related to postcard in some way. This spymaster's teammates then debate amongst themselves, identify one of the agents out there, and if this agent is part of your team, great, you're one step closer to victory and they can guess again. If they identify an innocent bystander, boom, turn is over. If they identify an agent on the other team, well, you've just helped them towards victory. And if you identify the lone assassin in the field, you lose immediately. The great challenge for the spy master is giving a clue that is big enough that you can ideally identify as many of your agents as possible, but the bigger you go, the more the risk of your teammates identifying someone who you did not intend. The great part as a teammate, well, you get to try to decipher what the spy master means. You have lots of great debates amongst yourself while the spy master is just trying to keep a still face and not give anything away as you guess your way to victory. Decrypto is another team-based deduction game, but unlike Codenames, it requires a lot of thought and creativity over the course of the entire game in order to succeed. Each team has a holder that has four words in it that are numbered one, two, three, four. And each round, a member of the team will get a code card that has a three-digit number, say, three, two, four. That person has to give clues based on the word in slot three, the word in slot two, and the word in slot four, so that your teammates can answer with the code 324. However, the other team gets to try to guess your code first. And if they intercept that code, they get a decryption marker. And if they get two of those markers, they win. If your teammates do not give the correct code, you get a penalty marker. And if you get two of those, you lose. So the challenge of the game is that you have to give clues that are clear enough for your team that can see those words but that cannot be deciphered over time by the other team. So if I have a word like letter, I have to give a clue that my team understands as letter. But if another player later gives that same clue to try to get us to guess letter, the other team will know what slot that number is. So you have to give a wide variety of clues for very common words that ideally only your teammates understand. It's trying to be nebulous and clear at the same time, and you have to have a lot of variety in your clues over the course of the entire game so that your opponents don't decrypt what you're trying to say. Just One is the third deduction game on this list, but unlike Codenames in the Crypto, it is a cooperative game in which everyone is trying to land on the right answer. Each round, one person is going to be the guesser, and they are trying to guess the answer, which is going to be just one word. Everyone else is a clue giver and they are going to see this answer without the guesser knowing it and they write down just one word as a clue. But before these clues are revealed, they show them to each other. And if any two people have written down the same answer, they're thrown away. Those clues are not revealed and the guesser has to work with less information, which means the challenge for you as the clue giver is to figure out something that's unique enough that no one else is going to say it, and yet something that will still be helpful to the guesser. And your challenge as, as the guesser is to be confronted with this strange assortment of words and somehow see where they're all pointing. All too often, we don't even play just one for points because the activity itself, the need to be creative with all of your clues and to decipher what people are giving you is enjoyment enough. To 
continue with the trends that we have so far, Dixit is half deduction game, half bluffing game. Each player has a hand of six beautifully illustrated cards, typically with surrealistic imagery. And on a turn, the active player, the storyteller, chooses one of the cards in their hands and says something about it. It can be a single word, a single line, part of a song, a poem, whatever they want to say. Then they take this card, they put it face down on the table. Each other player chooses a card in their hand that they think matches whatever the storyteller said and puts it face down on the table as well. The storyteller shuffles these cards, you reveal them, and everyone votes for what they think is the storyteller's card. And if everyone identifies that card, or conversely, no one identifies the storyteller's card, the storyteller failed. Everyone scores two points except the storyteller who gets nothing. If some people identify the storyteller's card, well, the storyteller gets three points and so does everyone who guesses correctly. Whoever guesses incorrectly, well, the player who put down that card gets a point because they tricked them. So the challenge of the game is to give, if you are the storyteller, a clue that is somewhat clear. You want some people to guess correctly, ideally only one other person so that you score and that person scores, but not everybody. But if you go too obscure, no one's gonna get it and you get nothing. So that's the challenge of the game. The first player to score 30 points wins. Like Dixit, One Night Ultimate Werewolf combines deduction and bluffing, but with a high dose of chaos mixed in. You might be familiar with the traditional party game Werewolf, in which each night werewolves eat one of the villagers in town, and each daytime, all the humans vote on who to lynch as a werewolf. And eventually, either the werewolves overrun the town and eat everyone, or all the werewolves are dead. One Night Ultimate Werewolf pairs all the action down to a single night. Everyone still gets a secret role, and there are also three roles in the middle of the table. There's a moderator in the game who also carries out a role, or you can use the free app to run you through all the actions of the roles in order. And that's important because many of the actions will be swapping roll cards over the course of the evening. Werewolves get to look at each other. The seer is going to look at one or two cards. The troublemaker is going to swap two people's cards without looking at them, and they don't know that they've been swapped. The robber is going to swap their card with someone else's and then look at it so they know their identity as well as the person they stole from. The drunkard is just going to take one of the rolls in the middle instead of the drunkard, but they don't even know who they are. After all the shenanigans at night, everyone wakes up. You're going to argue about who you were and what you did. And then everyone is going to vote on one person who they think is a werewolf. And if a werewolf is killed, the villagers win. If not, the werewolves win. Everything's simple, boiled down to a minimum. The game plays with three to 10 players and there's lots of different roles to use. So you can swap things up and things can get very complicated with all of the swapping and lying that will happen. Our final game recommendation is Rorschach, and with a name like that, you might have some idea of what's going on. Three word cards are revealed each turn, and they are marked with different symbol tokens. Three images are revealed as well, and one person on the active team, the test team, is the test subject for that round, and they are going to mark the images with the same symbols as are on the word cards, but face down. They're making secret associations between word and image, and the other people on the test team, that player's team, try to identify what those connections are. They're going to talk amongst themselves, choose one of the images, and mark it with the symbol that is on the word that they think the test subject made the connection with. But the opposing team does this as well. They're also going to choose a symbol and mark it. Now, if the control team, the opposing team, has chosen correctly, they essentially negate what the test team did. If the test team is correct, but the opposing team, the control team, is also correct, you just throw the card away, no one scores it, but the test team, because they were correct, gets another shot at guessing one of the final two cards, the final two image word association pairs. If the test team is incorrect. They didn't even make the connection in the first place. Well, 
the round's going to end, they don't score any points, but if the opposing team, the control team, did guess correctly, they will score a point. So you have a volley of points back and forth as people are guessing correctly about the associations that people are making between images and words. And the game continues until one team has scored at least four points and is two points ahead of the other team, at which point they win. That's a wrap on Board Game Geek's party game recommendations for 2021. And while we did not intentionally set out to choose deduction games for the party game category, apparently we're all trying to figure something out here. If you are looking for other game recommendations, you can go to boardgamegeek.com slash gift guide and you'll find recommendations in more than 15 different categories of games, such as cooperative games, card games, family games, two player games, and much more. Hope you find something that you enjoy or moreover, something that someone else will enjoy. Hopefully something they'll want to play with you. <laughs>